The UN Guiding Principles on Business and Human Rights uh, were developed through an extensive research and multi-stakeholder consultation process over a six-year period um, by Professor John Ruggie, who's the special representative. Um, and what they lay out is a framework um, of the distinct but complementary roles and responsibilities that governments and also companies have when it comes to business related human rights impacts. And they're based on three pillars the state duty to protect against negative impacts uh, by business. Um, the business responsibility or the corporate responsibility to respect human rights, uh, meaning to avoid infringing on people's rights and then to address negative impacts with which the business may be involved. And the third pillar is access to remedy and both states uh, and companies have important roles to play in that regard. The challenge now is of course putting the guiding principles into practice. Um, in many cases we see companies coming into situations where they there's a legacy of a poorly conducted process, um, often by the government. Uh, and the company comes in, um, they're taking over the land or they've acquired the land, but they have that legacy hanging over them. They have a community that is frustrated, that is unhappy, that may be experiencing uh, significant negative health impacts or environmental impacts, um, and they have to deal with that legacy. So I think that uh, consulta previa is extremely important, um, but it requires at least three things. Uh, companies need to allocate the necessary time, and that can be very challenging, uh, because for many companies they're being driven by a tight project schedule, and you have a sense of technical or operational time, which is quite different from the social time that the community relations team needs to engage with communities. Um, you also need people who have the right kinds of skills. Uh, not everybody does. Not everybody can handle these kinds of com uh, conversations with people, can sit down and listen and, and let communities know that they're being heard, um, that requires particular skill. Uh, and then you need the internal processes in the company to take what you hear in those consultations and in those consent seeking processes and actually integrate that into your internal decision making um, so that it's actually having an impact uh, inside the company. Um, all of those things are challenging and on top of all of that, let's assume that you have consulted or you have consent this is an ongoing process and it has to continue uh, throughout the life of the project because ultimately it's about relationships between the company and the local community um, and relationships as we all know uh, are long-term things that you have to work out. So government has a critical role to play um, right up front in relationships in terms of the contracts that they sign with companies um, and in terms of the approvals and the permits that they give and these kinds of issues um, is adequate time built into the company's processes um, what do those internal processes look like uh, how can we be confident that the community Community's voice will be heard and integrated into, into decision making. These are the kinds of issues that the government is responsible or should be responsible for thinking about at those points in time where it has leverage, where it can say yes or no, or we want to see a modification or an amendment. Um, and that's where I think the work that the Peruvian uh, banking um, services regulator is doing is so unique because they're looking at um, those decisions be when they're being made by uh, private sector banks. But the financial regulator, a state agency, is using its authority to say, we want to incentivize consideration of these issues in um, loans and decision-making by private banks, as well as by the state. Uh, and that's quite innovative.